What's the most deadly substance in the world? It's another real life lore. We're on a binge, I guess. This video was made possible by Squarespace. Start building your website for free at squarespace.com RLL, and then when you're ready to launch, use the code RLL to get 10% off at checkout. Life on Earth can be a dangerous one. Some things are poisonous, other things have sharp teeth, and more mud. things can kill you without you even noticing. Nothing In theory, anything could kill you, really. It just depends on how much or how little of it gets inside of you. We're going to start off with regular water. In order milk. to die from a lethal dose of water, you would need to drink 5.6 kilograms or 1.5 gallons in a rapid amount of time. Water poisoning. Other common household items you need to consume a ridiculous amount of to die from include table sugar, which you need to slam down 1.8 kilos worth of to die from. But if you're feeling salty, you need to consume a whole kilogram of MSG Please to die storm. that way. Death by vitamin C requires you consuming 738 grams, and death by alcohol means you need to consume 438 grams of pure ethanol, which is roughly 25 shots worth of 80 proof vodka. If you prefer smoking, Do you have to know that it takes 79 grams of pure THC to create a lethal response inside of the body. Since cannabis leaves only have a small amount of THC inside of them, you would need to smoke an outrageous amount of weed to die from an overdose. Approximately 680 kilograms oh, of a Toyota fuck. Corolla in 15 minutes. Drugs like ibuprofen can be lethal at around 40 grams, which is about the same weight as an adult mouse, while chemicals like hydrochloric acid approach lethal levels at about 15 grams. In a concentrated, pure form, caffeine can kill you in as little as 12 grams. Oh wow, that wait, that's kind of nutty. But that shouldn't make you worry about drinks because you would need to consume 116 oh. cans of Red Bull or 60 cups of Americano coffee to induce a lethal reaction that way. Drugs like MDMA or ecstasy aren't much worse, with a lethal dose being around 11 grams worth. Eating a block of uranium about the same size as a 1 euro coin would probably be enough to kill, while consuming a US quarter weight worth of cocaine would also do the trick. Biopental Wait, that, that's enough to kill? I feel like this is what the majority of rock stars would do before a concert. This seems like a casual amount of coke for at least what movies have taught me, I suppose. Four oh, the grams. weight of a well, quarter. Oh, 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 oh. The weight, but sorry. Mercury is even worse. I got deceived by the picture. Toxic metal or by the video. Applications like thermometers that can kill you with as little as a US penny sized amount. But after this point is where we arrive at the most lethal hard recreational drugs, heroin and LSD, both of which can kill you in as little as one gram, or about the same weight as two raisins. In its pure form, nicotine can Fintanol also be lethal probably, probably kill you in less than that, I imagine. 403 milligrams. But since tobacco leaves have so little, your only risk of dying from smoking cigarettes is the long-term health effects associated with them like cancer. The most venomous scorpion in the world is the appropriately named Death Stalker Scorpion and its venom can kill you in a dosage as small as 267 milligrams, which is only slightly less dangerous than hydrogen cyanide. Pufferfish are infamously poisonous. Yeah, and I knew that. Since they contain the toxin called tetrodotoxin, and ingesting an amount as small as only Look how fucking smug that bastard could looks. be enough to kill you. This is almost as toxic as plutonium, which if it's not being used in a nuclear bomb... You guys know you can eat pufferfish? I think there, what is it? I think there's only like three places in the world where you can actually eat pufferfish. They prepare it in like a certain way that makes it edible. Fugu, that's what it is. It's the most dangerous food you can eat, yeah. I don't know why anyone would risk it. It probably tastes like shit too. Also, someone got real brave when they tried to eat this pufferfish at some point. There must have been a lot of trial and error. Fucking piling up corpses to find the one thing they could eat on this stupid fish. I believe it's in Japan. There's fugu in America as well. I remember we looked it up one time. I think Matt brought it up once. I would never try it. Sarin, an odorless and colorless liquid, is so dangerous <laughs> that it's classified as a weapon of mass destruction under international law. What the Often fuck is that? Often used in chemical weapons, a lethal dose amounts to just 11 milligrams, or about the size of a grain of sand. Inhaling Holy a lethal shit. amount can kill you in just 1 to 10 minutes, and even if you survive, what? nerve damage is almost a guarantee. But weirdly, there's still creatures out there that produce more potent poison than a weapon of mass destruction. What the fuck is Saren? That sounds like a race in Mass Effect. What? I've never heard of that, I don't think. Toxic synthetic organophosphorus compound. 
When was this made? Sarin gas. Well, even just sarin. He, well, death water. Well, yeah, but they use it as a like a nerve gas. The Tokyo subway sarin attack. Tokyo subway sarin attack. The Om Shinrikyo released an impure form of sarin in the metro. 12 people died and 6,200 received injuries. So they made it themselves? They stole it. Oh my god, man. Holy shit. I've never heard of sarin. That's horrifying. Oh, it was discovered. Wait, is it naturally occurring? Didn't it say it was synthetic? Oh, he discovered it by trying to create stronger pesticides. I see. I thought he found, like, a fountain of sarin. That's fucking crazy, man. That's a, that's a pretty scary one. Thank you for the five gift subs, Adrianic Game. Thank you for that. Like the Brazilian wandering spider, whose venom can kill you in amounts as small as 8 milligrams. Or the inland taipan snake found in Australia, whose venom can kill you in a dose as small as 2 wreck. milligrams. Or the weight of a mosquito. The extremely powerful toxin ricin, produced in the seeds of the castor oil plant, can kill you if you inhale even 1 milligram, which has made it popular for assassination attempts and biological warfare around Never, I didn't know the that, world. Captain. But latrotoxin, the venom produced by the black widow spider, will kill you even quicker in amounts as small as just 267 micrograms. The strongest poison any known creature makes on its own is batrachotoxin, found in the so-called poison This little frog? frog? 124 micrograms is all it takes to this kill son you, of a about bitch. the same weight as two human eyelashes. But Holy there are shit. two substances that are even worse. One is called polonium-210, <laughs> so dangerous that if you inhale just 620 nanograms, about the same as two to three grains of of pollen, you would die an agonizing death. Fuck. It is 250,000 times more toxic than hydrogen cyanide, and was used to assassinate Russian dissident Alexander Litvinenko back in 2006. But oh, that was recent. Far, the most lethal toxin known to mankind oh is botulinum God. toxin, which is commercially yes. sold as Botox. Botulism! 62 nanograms botulism. all it takes to make you dead. I, 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 I know this one. Two of your body's cells. It's 2.5 million times more toxic than hydrogen cyanide. We learned about that on stream, and since then I've never eaten anything from a gas station. Botulism, the story was there was a guy, or well, a couple people, they ate nachos from a gas station. All eight of them suffered from botulism, which is exactly what he mentioned, which is that this toxic, all right, this toxin, I already forgot the name of it, botulinum toxin. And what it did is it paralyzed all eight of them. I don't, I don't, I don't know if any of them died because they all like immediately received medical care. Yeah, we learned about it from Chubby Emu. It, I have never, ever changed, like, my life based on a YouTube video until that one. Because I used to eat it, like, Wawa and stuff. I was even planning to do a gas station food tier list of just eating the grossest food. Because I used to eat, like, the seafood that they kept on the racks at gas stations back when I was in college. Like, if I'd get drunk, I'd have, like, their gas station seafood. <laughs> which was the stupidest idea ever. And then I watched that video and I'm like, oh my god, I will never do that again. Wawa food is good, but I will never eat it again. If it comes from a gas station and it's not prepackaged, I'm not eating it. I'm not risking botulism for the sake of having a goddamn nacho. Were they, were they paralyzed permanently or... The one that Chubby Emu focused on, I think made a full recovery over the course of like a month or two or something like that. I don't know about the others. But somehow, fucking botulism is more... Dangerous, well, dangerous might not be the right word. More toxic than polonium-210, sarin, and this goofy frog's cum or whatever. A fucking gas station nacho. I know it's not all gas station food, it was a freak accident. What happens is, Chubby Emu explained it. It can only exist when it's really mismanaged. So the cheese from the nachos was apparently not properly cared for. And I think it got too hot. So it got way too hot. It like started rotting or something. And then it eventually produced botulinum toxin. Misuse of cheese dispenser called caused the botulism outbreak. Oh, this was in 2017. 10 people were confirmed and one of them died. Yeah, like I said, I'm just never going to risk gas station nachos. She didn't die. 
but her life was forever changed as a result. One of them did. They said it was a, like a father. Okay, let's see the actual specifics of how this happened. Thanks to Tier 1 Pharaoh and the resub random number Sonic Weezman. They give sub random number in the resub Jack Attack. A five pound bag of nacho cheese collected at the retail location on May 5th were being used past the best buy date. This is why I take those things like the gospel, by the way. If something is even a day after Best Buy, I don't fucking touch it. Oh, it was- <gasps> It was contaminated at the retail location! Yeah, that's fucking crazy though. Did the nacho cheese rotten because it expired? Well, no, it didn't start- It didn't fucking produce the botulin toxin. Botulinum toxin right away. Just because it was past its Best Buy date. There was just a series of horrible mismanagements of the cheese. And it led to ideal conditions for botulinum toxin. Why only one gram of this substance costs 25 billion dollars. Okay, it's 25. Oh no, it's 25 billion. Let's see the resub Nutella. This real life lore video is made possible by Skillshare, home to over 15,000 classes that could teach you a new life skill. The first 500 people to sign up Gotta be the in the description will get a two month free It could trial. be like so Jesus Christ's blood, maybe. Valuable... Drugs like heroin, cocaine, and LSD, for example, are the most expensive drugs in the world by sheer weight. $3,000 per gram of LSD? The market value for diamonds oh, per gram is even more prohibitively expensive. But even this is nothing compared to the most valuable Thanks material sub -tyrone. known to humanity, antimatter. So, oh. what even is antimatter? We don't know. To put it simply, antimatter is the opposite of regular matter. Down at the atomic level, antimatter is made up of particles and atoms just like regular matter is. The only difference is that they have an opposite electric charge. Protons in antimatter are negative and called antiprotons, while electrons are positive and called positrons. <laughs> Whenever antimatter and matter touch one another, they instantly annihilate each other in a 100% efficient release of energy. That's fucking this cool. This pure energy release is why antimatter could prove to be extremely useful. The most efficient nuclear weapons, for example, convert to mere 7 to 10% of their mass into energy, while antimatter to matter collisions release 100% of their mass into energy. If you somehow were carrying one gram of antimatter about the size of a raisin and dropped it on the ground, it would create an explosion greater than both the Hiroshima and Nagasaki nuclear explosions combined, easily nice. enough to destroy an entire city. Smaller scale assassination weapons may be more economically feasible, however, like the theorized antimatter bullet, what? which would essentially be a regular bullet but with a tiny one billionth of a gram of positrons attached to the tip. Upon impact, the bullet fired from a rifle would be capable of destroying an entire house, tank, or any other similar sized object. Holy but shit! But has several other uses beyond just military ones. Antiprotons have also been shown in several studies to have the potential to treat certain kinds of cancers. And antimatter could also be used as a fuel source for interstellar travel. It is conceivable that using antimatter as a fuel source could propel a rocket with humans on board to about 50% of the speed of light which is fast enough to reach the nearest star to that's earth pretty good a little over two years that's pretty so good haven't we created enough antimatter yet to do any of these incredible things the answer is because antimatter is incredibly rare difficult to produce and prohibitively expensive currently it appears that nearly the entire observable universe is made out of regular matter and while it is possible that there could be entire galaxies made out of antimatter we have so far not been able to detect any and Antimatter is produced naturally in Earth's outer atmosphere when high-energy cosmic rays impact it, but the amount produced is tiny and lasts only briefly before it comes into contact with 
regular matter and annihilates itself. The only practical means of acquiring antimatter so far have been to produce it artificially ourselves. I didn't know the Hadron this Collider produced incredibly it. incredibly difficult and expensive. The Large Hadron Collider, operated by CERN in Switzerland, for example, one of the most tactics. expensive and complicated facilities ever built, is capable of producing 10 million antiprotons per minute when fully operational. That sounds like a lot, but it's actually a laughably tiny amount. To produce just a single gram of antimatter at that rate of production, it would take CERN oh. roughly 100 billion years what? to complete. Production is only the first problem, though. Storing it is perhaps an even larger problem. Since antimatter annihilates matter instantly, you can't just store it in a regular container. You have to suspend the material without it coming into contact with anything. And so far, CERN has only succeeded in storing antimatter atoms for a record 17 minutes before they became annihilated. Since just that one is gram so is cool. enough to obliterate an entire city, safety precautions in storing the material and keeping Keeping it in safe hands would be of the utmost importance, and we're not even sure how exactly we would store such a large amount in the first place, is cited. While in another NASA paper written back in 1999, a figure of $62.5 trillion per gram is cited. Oh, so it's getting which cheaper. Is about 83% of the entire global GDP just to produce one single gram. We would have to live with the consequences of life in a world with abundant antimatter, both positive ones and negative ones. The potential of antimatter sounds nuts, but I think if we ever did actually have antimatter, it, we would destroy the entire planet pretty much instantly. Maybe not even on purpose. 50% the speed of light is really fucking good though. That is solid. We could get a lot done. How 2,000 people died fighting over a bucket. It's real life lore again? Okay. This will be the last real life lore video for tonight, and then we'll watch the rest of the Hobbit video. There was the time that El Salvador invaded Honduras after a controversial football game, the time that the Austrian army fought a battle with itself while drunk, and countless what? times where one guy thought that his religion or Take that. Of ruling was better than anybody else's. Most wars, in fact, could probably be argued were fought for stupid reasons. But in all of my personal reading, I've never come across one as silly sounding as the War of the Bucket, which, yeah, was an entire war where thousands of people died fighting over essentially a wooden bucket. The that better be a Northern great Italy fucking bucket, the though. Middle Ages. Italy at the time was Pristine. divided into various different city states, and Northern Italy in particular was part of the Holy Roman Empire. The Holy Roman Emperor invaded Italy and was defeated by a bunch of city states brought together by the Pope. Oh, Over the nice. Next couple centuries, different states shifted around their allegiances, but by the 14th century, Modena was all aboard Team Holy Roman Emperor, and Bologna was on Team Pope. In 1296, Bologna invaded and took a couple territories from Odena, which their buddy in the papacy confirmed to be legitimate. Is this not pronounced baloney? This is 100% pronounced baloney, right? It's not? What? I th uh, is it? Is it not? Because baloney is spelled like that, isn't it? Yeah, baloney sausage. It's pronounced bologna. <laughs> Whatever, man, it's baloney. Suck my dick. It, that will forever just be baloney. The amount of times when I was a kid, because I used to love baloney, and some pretentious asshole had to tell me it's actually spelled bologna, that's forever ingrained in my head. Anytime I see bologna, it's gonna be baloney to me. Meanwhile, the guy really Modena got pretty pissed about that and said enough with the Pope and what he thinks. I'm gonna show those Bolognese who's boss. His name was the very easily pronounceable Passerino Bonocolsi, and he didn't seem to be very popular at home. And do you know what the best strategy to win support from your own people is when you're not very popular? You start a war and you hope you win it. So Bonacolsi confronted Bologna over the stolen territories and what would you know, the Pope declared him a rebel against the church no! and offered a bounty for anybody that could quote, harm him or any of his possessions. Damn, the Pope's By getting 1325, mean. border skirmishes between the two rival city-states were getting more intense. In July of that year, the Bolognese launched a raid into Modena and Where burned down a bunch of their farms. The next month in August, a bunch of pissed off that, Bolognese Pat. peasants apparently spent two weeks rampaging across other parts of Modena and burned down even more farms. 
So during all of this chaos, a bunch of I know why, because no one cares. Who had nothing better to do? Just decided take it. It's not worth your life. To sneak into the center of the city of Bologna and steal a wooden bucket from their well, probably thinking how hilarious of a prank that just was. Modena was shocked when Bologna claimed the theft of their bucket was humiliating, and so they demanded that the soldiers who stole it return it. When Modena just laughed that off as not being serious, Bologna turned the scale up to 11, declared oh, war on them, shit. and raised an army of 32,000 men. The Bolognese army invaded Modena in November and demanded that the bucket be returned again. Bonacolsi in Modena was only capable of raising an army of 7,000 men to Oh, no them, chance, they're but fucked. even though he was outnumbered by more than 4 to 1, he marched out to meet the invaders on the field anyway in what would subs, become res. the Battle of Zappolino. The details of what exactly went down here are hazy, but somehow the Modanese won after a few hours oh my God. of hand-to-hand -hand combat that what a saw of around 2,000 people losing their lives over a bucket. That's about as many casualties in one day of fighting over a bucket as the total number of American casualties during the entire war in Afghanistan. After winning the battle, the Modanese routed the Bolognese so who got the all bucket, the way though? back to their city walls, where they laughed at them and hosted a series of athletic games just outside to make it worse. The Modanese That's then proudly hardcore. put the bucket they stole up for display as a trophy. And nice. if you visit Modena right now, they still have the exact same bucket that you can actually see nearly 700 years later still up for display. What a stupid bucket. What is this design? How dumb were these people? This bucket's trash. This is garbage i mean it, it, i guess it has like longevity to it though like it's still intact so good for them there i guess but this is a garbage bucket but you don't even have to wait five more minutes to get started with building your own website his transitions are always so smooth it's about the history man fuck the history that bucket's shit can we watch redneck fighting it's called i'm a redneck cockerham uh okay uh, let me look it up real quick Unboxing from I'm a Redneck Cockerham. I'm not finding anything besides like product reviews. Oh, here I found it. Can I even watch this on stream? Hey, hey, don't grab my butt. That's my butt. Don't oh, this, is, this butt. isn't even a real fight. It's like the WWE, but What's with more Cockerham. Hey, hey, hey. Well, at least we know y'all like each other. You're holding hands. There's no rules here. Did it come did out? Yeah. Did it rip did your ear out? No. Hey, oh, hey, sneak attack! Hey! Hey! hey. <laughs> the hell? Nice. That was cool. 